Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. I traded in my Dodge Challenger 2016. It was a base model SXT. I had a video, 100,000 mile overview of the vehicle and my opinion of it. I really like that vehicle. So when I traded in vehicles, it was really, really hard to pick one. I was choosing between the Jeep Grand Cherokee and the Honda Ridgeline. Now I, I got the Honda Ridgeline and I'll explain why. Um, I actually considered the Honda Ridgeline back in 2016 when I bought my Challenger, uh, but ultimately the Challenger won out. But now I am in need of something a little bit more practical and I didn't want a truck. So did not want a big heavy truck. I wanted something that rode nice and I was able to pick things up in the back of a bed or have a large cargo area in this case actually has two cargo areas and i'll show you that now i have a full overview of the 2017 18 and 19 honda ridgeline so different um, trim levels as well so this is a 20 and there's not a whole lot that has changed there is a couple things that have changed and i think they're really going in the right direction as far as the uh the, the changes are consumer led so that's good they're listening to the people there's a couple compromises there's quite a bit of compromises actually compared to my challenger and i was kind of surprised at some of the you know the the cheaping out especially this is not at the lowest trim level um, this is the rtl in 2020 they dropped off some of the lower trim levels and some of the medium trim levels so the bottom trim level now is the sport and the rtl is just right above that and even even in the highest trim level, uh, there's still some some things that I was surprised that they didn't include. But anyways, uh, so this is the RTL, and I'll go ahead and explain the, the differences. They, they went ahead and put a nine-speed transmission with the push-button shifter selection system in all trims. So that's one of the changes. They added a locking tailgate. That's another thing that a lot of people wanted. Also, the rear doors swing out wider. Uh, that's another thing that a lot of people wanted. Um, and of course, dropping off the trim levels and kind of consolidating those. But other than that, it's basically the same vehicle. So, the basically, they're in the front here is all standard bulbs. There's no LED. Um, like on, on the next trim level up, the Elite, the RTLE, uh, has a an LED daytime running light. This looks like it has it, but it does not have it. Uh, it's just the halogen bulb here as a daytime running light. And so these are things that I can change. I can change the bulbs to LED. So it was not a huge deal, but uh, it would have been nice if we had LED lighting, more LED lighting. It does have LED taillights, but not turn signals in the back. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of a compromise. You know, the Challenger had almost a every single exterior light LED and it was very sharp and vivid and just looked nice and it was a lot cheaper vehicle than this one. And that was the bottom trim that I got. It's not like I had to spend a bunch of money. So, um, you know, I, I did compromise on the color. I originally wanted a silver vehicle, sort of like my Challenger, um, but the interior color won me over. So I compromised on the exterior color just based on the, the inventory and just to get that, that nice interior. So this is the modern steel metallic external color. And it's basically like a darker gray. And I wanted a light color, but you know, this is, this is still a good color. I like it, but the interior is what I was really focused on as far as the color. And the wheels look nice. Now the higher trim levels basically just have a painted wheel and didn't really like them. Uh, so I actually like this wheel a little bit better. So, you know, that's, that's a plus of me getting the lower trim level instead of the higher trim level. And I do like the fact that it's, um, you know, painted handles and stuff like that. Now it does have that chrome outlining the, the glass there. 
and that's fine I mean, it's not overly done it kind of blends in with the wheels I did have the front glass tinted with a nano ceramic tint and the rear windows were already tinted did have to pay extra for the tint now I notice a lot of people confuse what this line is so this line what the common thing is people will say well that is a fake separation to make it look more like a truck and I guess you can say that but it doesn't make any sense but it's kind of like cheapening the design of the vehicle by saying that because it's 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 I mean it's it's inaccurate basically because the whole point of the separation of a truck it has a frame and a, a chassis that the, the all the all the upper portion of the vehicle is bolted down to and they separate in order to make the front and rear portions flex better so when it's going over uneven terrain it can flex there in the middle this is a unibody so it's one solid piece right but it still has to flex so this actually serves the same purpose as separating this panel from this panel allowing that to flex a little bit better so there is a purpose to that line it's, it's not a just a like let's just put this phony thing in there just to trick people it, it's not that at all um so there's a lot of misinformation online and people just like to say negative things about things they don't like and you know confirmation bias takes it from there now i i do like the the plastic portion around the bottom see this plastic portion around the bottom and it goes around here and that really helps out especially with these uh little mud flaps integrated mud, mud flaps here with the challenger i had issues with when i'm going through road construction for tar being slung up on the side of the vehicle so i'm hoping that this right here because uh, it's kind of a pain to get off kind of like bugs so i'm hoping that this will not sling so much stuff on the side of the vehicle so the challenger kind of the way it's contoured and the way the tires were it just was a pain to wash sometimes it just had a build up there and the front and the back so i'm hoping this will help out a lot and uh so i like the style i mean the style is it's kind of like i mean it looks like a half of a truck and half of a suv the front portion of it if you just look at the front it looks like a you know like a honda pilot or pretty much any honda suv at this point or cuv and in the back of course it looks like a truck so that's the genius of it is that it has the ride quality and the comfort and the noise isolation of an suv but it has the conveniences of a more of a light duty truck it does have a pretty decent payload of 1500 pounds a towing capacity since this is the all-wheel drive of 5000 pounds which is pretty substantial but it's still you know in line with a lot of other um, suvs but I'm not going to be hauling huge stuff. I'm not going to load it, load up the back of the, tr the truck. My purpose is just like pick, picking up a large box from Lowe's or something. It's not, uh, it's not all about, you know, heavy duty hauling or pulling some heavy boat or anything like that. That's not my purpose in buying this vehicle. Now I'm taking a hit on, on fuel economy because my Challenger was getting 27, 28 average much higher on the highway and it was just a really fuel efficient vehicle and plenty of power so this one gets about 23 24 driving it easy so it's a little bit heavier vehicle a couple hundred pounds heavier so you know it's kind of a, a hit on the fuel economy there but it is worth it to me to gain the um the capability that this vehicle has and it came with a towing hitch but you notice the towing the hitch um, the connection there the wiring is below the bumper so that's going to be get all all dirty and stuff when you touch it i do like the fact that some vehicles have them above the bumper right in this area but i'm not going to be hauling anything so it's not a huge deal it does have this little label giving you some information which is nice i wish trucks would have you know maybe some of them do but this one's really easy it's right there to see it and it's really easy to uh tell, tell what the the rating is i do have these little magnets here available and i'll have a link in the description if you'd like to purchase one of those and i'll have a separate video kind of showing all my merchandise
So if you've seen my other videos, you've seen that the tailgate lowers this way. It also opens up this way. Now the tailgate locks now. So, and I, okay, so the backup camera, I'm skipping that. See how well integrated the backup camera is, but it's slightly offset. That was a little bit of a disappointment. I wish it was in the center position, but you know, it is integrated well and looks pretty good. So this, in addition to the tailgate, um, this also locks as well. So you can raise that up. And I got my stuff in here and it is really handy. Um, just going through this vehicle, as far as um, you know, using it, putting groceries back here and all that stuff, this is a really handy location to put stuff. And I like the way it's secure. So um, I can put my equipment back here and it has basically two locking uh, things that lock like two locking doors before you can access this area so the tailgate locks and this compartment locks so I like that and I did pull out the spare tire and try to utilize some of the space around it because there's certain things I want to bring with me so you can see I put this knife right here um, I just kind of tie strapped it to that jack and then I put a uh, tire repair kit and stuff on top of that spare tire. I was trying to utilize the space under there, but it is pretty tight in there. So, um, but it does have a pretty good amount of space for little tiny things, but you just can't really put too much. I wanted to put like a, a tire inflator or something like that in there. It just wasn't going to fit. So what I'm trying to do is keep this area open, this cargo space open, so I can access it without anything just lingering here all the time. Uh, I just want to have stuff out of the way. And so far, I've, I've gone through the car wash and rain and all that stuff, and no water has gotten into this compartment. It is well sealed up. It also has this like uh, uh, reservoir around the outside to channel water away from this compartment. So that's good. Um, if this had was getting any kind of water in it or anything like that, that would be a big issue for me. It would take away from the the usefulness of this compartment. It also has this little compartment here. I wish this locked. Um, because so if I want to put some stuff in here, it seems to be sealed up enough to where I could put some stuff I put gloves and some straps So, you know, it, it's one of those things where if somebody steals it um, You know, you, I mean try not to put too expensive stuff in there But anybody can just walk up and steal your stuff. So that's an issue And I like the location of these lights. They're not LED um, on this particular trim model but uh, they're lo located in a spot where it illuminates the bed but when you open up this trunk area uh, and you lift it up, you notice they illuminate, they, the, the light casts in this cargo area. So at nighttime, I was really surprised when I lift this up, we have two points of light for this cargo area because I was worried like there's no lighting under here. But these bed lights work perfect. I mean, they do a really good job. I want to say perfect, but they do a really good job. In this cargo area, the tailgate is not like this, but the cargo area senses the key. So even when the vehicle is locked, you can uh, open this up with as long as you have the key. It senses the key. But the tailgate is not like that. You do have to push the button on the key fob to unlock the vehicle in order to access this, this tailgate. Um, it would have been nicer if it sensed the key and then that way you can open it up, but that's just the way it is. Now the fuel door is on the driver's side, which is, you know, really important to me. And it also is a capless design, so I don't have to worry about a cap, which is nice. And it's the full, it's the full uh, key system. So it has the proximity key with remote start. That was a must. I was like, if, and all the trim levels have remote start standard now. So that was a big deal to me is remote start and it's integrated. I didn't want some like separate aftermarket key fob with a key remote start on it. I wanted one that had it integrated from the factory and this one already had it, which I was really happy about. Now the key is extremely heavy, um, not extremely, it's heavier than what it should be really. And this plastic portion is not, is very light. It's this metal chunky piece on the end where all the weight's coming from. And I don't know why they added that just a solid chunk of metal on the end. It just really adds a lot of unnecessary weight in my opinion. It'd be pretty cool if somebody had like an aftermarket, um, you know, piece that you can put there that kind of lighten this up a little bit because it does 
just have a little just i mean i don't i don't mind a, you know if it's a heavy key but if it's unnecessarily heavy it just doesn't make much sense to me okay so let's look at this interior i mentioned this interior this is the uh what they call gray and it's a very light gray interior and it gives you the light gray on the sides the leather seats leather trim seats and has a power seat on the driver and passenger and these are heated but it doesn't matter how much money you spend on this vehicle you're only you're not going to get ventilated seats it's only heated seats in this vehicle and, and you know in the ridge line in general all the trim levels it also has a a, a a that that same color on the headliner so this color really brightens up the interior and that's what i wanted a bright interior i didn't want a dark i was kind of getting tired of just a dark interior i want something a little bit brighter now it has a sunroof and i didn't really care about a sunroof so it just came with this trim level that's the thing about honda you you have um it just has trims it doesn't have options so you basically have to choose the trim that matches your preferences as best as possible so there's a lot of compromising going on uh, in that regard with honda as far as me there's i did not actually i didn't even want a power seat i didn't want a power seat i didn't want a sunroof um I, but I couldn't delete those things. Other manufacturers, you can you can delete options, you can add options, you can customize the vehicle specifically to your preferences, order it and have it delivered, you know. But no, the, the Honda is, you have a trim level and that's, you take it or leave it type thing. So that was kind of, I can kind of understand why they do that. Um, these are made in Alabama. So they're like 70% US made, which is nice, which is good. And that's part of the reason why I chose this vehicle. But, you know, why not have a vehicle that you can customize a little bit? Since it's made right there, we can order it and have it delivered or whatever. Like other manufacturers, that would be nice. And the back seat room is great. Uh, there's lots of room back here. The seats flip up, just like in previous models. Now, I added, I added this under seat uh, mat. Also, these, uh, these like, all-weather mats. These are not from the... They came with, like, just regular carpeted mats, but I added these mats... Uh, and they look really nice and they seem to have decent adequate enough coverage Could be a little bit better, but you know, it's pretty good So that's something I added Also added in the trunk. I don't know if you noticed there's a carpet in the very bottom. I added that as well When I'm sitting in the driver's seat uh, the inside of the driver's side door has some fairly useful compartments now it does have this forward more forward location for a uh, bottle of water, which I really like that. You can also put, also used it for like hand sanitizer. It's like right there, reminds you to use it before you get back in the vehicle or whatever. Um, then these, com these kind of compartments here, this is enclosed as well, and this right here and there. Um, I like the layered so you can separate things, you know, have whatever you want. And it's, there's multiple tiers here. Uh, so, actually i mean the door is very functional also opening up the the fuel door is easy to find the button and it's easy to locate it now you, you you just press it you don't have to hold it down so if you accidentally press it it will release the trunk i mean the uh, the fuel door and some buttons here um the eco i don't really care for that because it compromises a little bit on the um, the climate control and here it's been very hot lately so i haven't really been using that much Side mirrors are easily adjusted there. And then you have your, um, this has a road departure system. And so when it, the, the road departure mitigation, I have it just warning only because I've had a, a couple situations where it thinks I'm leaving the road and it slaps on the brakes. So if there's a vehicle behind you and you're just kind of cruising along normally, all of a sudden, out of the blue, the vehicle just slaps on the brakes without you even, you know, like that's just what it does to keep you from running off the road or from hitting something. It, 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 it's not accurate. So it just thinks you're going to go off the road. Okay, so I'll give you an example. If you're driving along and there's a log truck coming oncoming you know on, on a back road or whatever and there's a curve well i want to be away from the log truck so i move my vehicle away from over to the right a little bit on the lane it's also a curve so i'm actually it appears for a brief second that i'm moving to the right like i'm going off the road 
Um, so the vehicle just slaps on the brakes to try to avoid me going off the road, but I'm not going off the road. So it misinterprets what I'm doing. So I just changed that to, um, that's, a, that's a big hazard in my opinion. So I changed that to just warning only. And I noticed once I put on warning only, it's been lots of times in which it pops up here and says brake and it starts flipping out for like apparently no reason, like just oncoming traffic or whatever, maybe somebody swerving in my direction or if I'm just, you know, not in the center of the lane or something. So that's something that I had to turn off. So just keep that in mind, um, you know, be prepared for if it's turned on to just randomly slap on the brakes on you. So if somebody's behind you close, they might rear end you basically if you're, you know, if you're doing that out of the blue for no reason but anyways um so that says some of the features there and when you're uh so when you're driving it has the adaptive cruise control which is really nice um it does it's not like super smooth like some of the other manufacturers it does kind of like you know re rev up and then slow down or rev up and slow down trying to get you at a a speed behind the vehicle without being too close so it's not like a consistent speed it eventually settles down but it seems like it's it could be a little bit smoother and uh so this button right here engages your um your your lane keep assist basically so it actually kind of helps steer the steering wheel default will be off so when you get in the vehicle and you turn on the cruise control you have to turn this on um otherwise it won't be on now if you don't have this on, or even if you do, if you get too close to the line to the right or left, it will basically tug the steering wheel like that. So all of a sudden it'll feel like you're going over a series of bumps. Um, it'll kind of tug it to the right, tug it to the left or whatever. And it seems like it's kind of overly sensitive because if you get, I mean, it doesn't take much very close to get to the line. All of a sudden it starts, the steering wheel starts moving. It's not a huge deal, but you know, it's kind of a little bit unnerving when you first experience it, if you're not prepared for it anyway. Uh, so, but I do like the adapt adaptive cruise control feature. It, it, it is good. It is handy. Um, I, there's the volume for the radio and um, pretty much going to have to use this because there's no knob over here. So you can uh, use this. You can tap it, but you can also slide your finger like this or you can slide here. So that's a way of um, accessing the volume. So and also has a quick mute, mute right there. But you have to push this in order for this to pop up to access the mute. So basically just the steering wheel is really the is be, the best way to do it. Uh, it's a little bit, it could be easier if it just had a knob, but um, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not a huge deal. I like the simplicity of the gauges. So it has a, a large digital speedometer, which is a necessity for me. I don't like, you know, I'm just so spoiled now with a digital speedometer, so that's just the way it is. Um, but I like the simplicity. It does have some information that you can use these buttons here to cycle up and down um, and get some information here. Oil life, tire pressure. And I like the way it does give you the tire pressure on each tire. Does it doesn't have just a tire pressure light? Um, you see the fuel economy is taking a hit right there because I'm not going anywhere. Um, but you see. And this one's dropped down to 22 so it's like 23 24 normally but i'm not i'm just sitting here idling so it's kind of hit taking a hit on my fuel economy um, but in this particular vehicle i just like a blank screen right here and then because i already have a digital speedometer there and it has your fuel gauge and your engine coolant temperature and it lets you know when your your cruise control is on now once you turn it on you don't have to turn it back on every time you get in the vehicle the cruise control unlike my challenger which you did have to turn it on uh, it does have, does have paddle shifters with a nine-speed automatic transmission. Um, it's for me, it would just mostly be for downshifting if I'm going down a steep hill or something. Um, I'm not really into the paddle shifters. It's not really th this particular vehicle is not really made for like racing with it or anything like that. But it does give you you the ability since it has this touch button uh, system here. You just put it in drive and you push it again for sport. It does give you some control over the, the shifting of the vehicle when you need it, um, but that's just, you know, not really useful for me anyway. Windshield wiper controls are there, and then your turn signal does have the automatic headlight controls and fog lights are controlled here. Right in there. And these are, actually, the headlights are pretty decent. I mean, they're, they're standard bulbs, they're standard halogen, yellow looking, um, but they're really good. I mean, I, I think, I was very impressed with, the, I was, thought I might be 
disappointed since they're not LEDs or anything or HIDs, but they were actually pretty good. You can check out my night video of this vehicle um, for more information on that. The climate control is good. Um, it's usually fine. I mean, it's been really hot. Like some days have been over 110 in this area. So with the, the ceramic tint and everything, it's actually done pretty good as far as the climate control. And the touch screen is um, fairly straightforward. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of tremendous amount of options. It does have the ability for Android Auto and, and Apple CarPlay, but I, I tried Android Auto, you know, and basically unless you're using the navigation system, like if you're going somewhere where you don't know where you're going, you need the navigation, I guess that's handy. But um, other than that, it just lets you listen to the music off your, off your phone just like this system. So it's not a, you know, not a huge plus for me. I mean, you have some apps here, but I'm not playing around with it too much, especially when I'm driving. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's adequate. I mean, it's good. It's fine. Um, it does have a tri-zone climate control. So it has a rear. It has driver and passenger and rear. Right now I have them synced. Um, but I thought that was pretty interesting, having the rear climate control in a, in a vehicle that's not very big like this. That's handy. So your heated seat controls are, you know, high, medium, and low. So it's a three-stage. Has a little storage area right there. Um, it's not really, I hadn't really used it much because my cell phone doesn't fit in there. Um, so even without the case, it doesn't fit in there. And it's not deep enough for me to trust it like this. So it's, I hadn't really found a use for it yet. Uh, this is where I put my cell phone. And this is where you have to put your cell phone. Um, if you are going to uh, use utilize Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So this is the, there's another USB port, but this is the only one that access, you know, that connects with the system. So uh, it's for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I plugged it into the other one, which is more convenient for me. And it says you can't, you have to plug it into this one. So now you have to have a wire connected to a cell phone right here to use that system. So now this is this whole area and a wire dangling around is now um, you know cluttering up your your cargo space here. So if if you if you're going to have the Apple CarPlay Android Auto kind of like you want your cell phone to be out of the way. So I would think that if you use this compartment, I have a bunch of junk in here now. There's a USB port already in here. So if you put your cell phone in here and plug it in, it's completely out of the way. You can even put it in this little tray right here and get it out of the way and just close up the system. And then that way you're interfacing with the screen with your cell phone and you can still utilize this. So if you're going on a long trip or something, this will be handy to have this extra cargo, this extra space to put some stuff. Um, but for whatever reason they have, they kind of make you plug in your cell phone here and then you have to have a wire too that's hanging around, could get snagged on something or whatever. It's just, I don't know, I think that could have been improved simply by adding this connective, uh, this USB port as a, um, an addition to that one. You know, have both of them, have an option, you know. Uh, there is an auxiliary input here as well and a 12 volt power supply. And I like this little tray because that's, you know, sometimes uh, this little guy right here, a little leather man tool I use all the time. On my Challenger, I'd have it in the center console, but it would always drop down in the, in the bottom and I'd have to dig it out. Um, so having this quick access stuff right here, like a pen, um, a tool, easily accessible and it's at the top and it just kind of stays out of the way. I can access all this junk here and then when I need it, I know right where it is. I don't have to fish through the bottom of this, this, um, junk to get it. Now, another thing I thought that was interesting is that it does not have any, any ability for wires to go in and out of this compartment, um, unless you leave this open. So you, you have to, you have to, if you close it, there's no, there's no way of access. Most center consoles like the Challenger or any other car that I've seen, pretty much most of them have the ability to have a little spot that they have for wires to go in and out. This has no such spot. So also the cup holders, there's no articulation. There's no, um, nothing to fill in the gap here. So when you have bottles in here, they move around. Same thing with the door. Um, you just put a bottle there and it moves around. Um, there's no nothing to pick up the slack. These are not illuminated. The higher trim, uh, the next higher trim will have these little illumination here as well as in the floorboard. This one doesn't have any of that. Just have these armrests. Now on the passenger side, 
it just flips down and up. But the driver's side, you can flip it down and then you can lift it up and it ratchets and you can adjust it a little bit and you just rest it where you want. Glove compartment, it does have a little tiny light in there, um, but it's pretty much a standard smooth and smooth plastic on the inside and nothing really special. The Challenger had a much better glove compartment and a better lighting system. This does have, in this particular trim, it does have LED little map lights. Uh, it does have the mirror and a little place to put some shades, a little conversation mirror, which is not in the sport. They just like leave that little mirror piece out. This is still there. It looks just like this, except for the little reflective part is gone. Uh, and uh, speaking of something that's gone that should be there, check this out. Look, little light, no lights here. You have to get a higher trim level just to get little uh, vanity lights here on these mirrors. I mean, it's like things that you would like on any vehicle that you'd find um even the basic standard vehicle there's some stuff that just even on higher trim levels you have to pay to the like close to the, you have to get the elite basically in order to get basic stuff like um you know vanity lights and stuff like that um so th i mean this one has good features and i'm not trying to say anything negative about it i just want to point out some of the stuff that I was kind of surprised you know that it didn't include so as far as driving it it's smooth it's comfortable it's quiet you really have to experience it for yourself um, if you're interested in a vehicle like this you definitely want to test drive it it's nothing like a truck so you don't you don't if you compare the ride to a truck then all trucks would fail even the Ram trucks which is very smooth uh, this one is more comparable to an SUV so you compare it to SUVs, it still holds its own. It's really, really a smooth ride and comfortable and quiet. And um, you can easily, you know, hold a conversation even when there's Harleys going by and stuff. It's really cool. Um, but anyways, th this is the vehicle I chose. And uh, so giving up my Challenger was tough, but um, I'm starting to really appreciate this vehicle and, and, and the functionality and all that stuff. There's some compromises, but that, that's pretty much the case with pretty much every vehicle. Um, the main compromises with my Challenger was, you know, the cargo space was limited. Not that limited. I, I put two by fours and all kinds of stuff in it, like eight foot two by fours. I put the seats down. I mean, I put all kinds of stuff in there. Um, but this one gives you much better than that. You know, you can put plywood and stuff in the back, which is nice. Like the, the, the Ford Ranger and some of the other midsize trucks, they don't have, the bed of the truck is not four feet wide. Um, so if you're putting in, and I showed you this in, the, in one of my Ranger videos, I actually went to Lowe's and I put some plywood in the back and you had to put it up, prop it up on one of the wheel wells. Um, so this one, you don't have to do that. You can just lay it flat right in the back of the truck and it's a five foot bed. So it's not, I mean, there's a lot of, Mid, like midside trucks have small beds a lot of them as far as the length even full-size trucks because they have such a huge cab back there the bed the bed's not that long so you know so this is pretty comparable as far as space to a full you know like to a lot of a lot of trucks in the market and and beats a lot of them and it rides way better i mean it's a great riding vehicle and it's quiet just a just a really good it is on the expensive side so with the sport trim the sport trim is like 34, I think. And that's like the cheapest one you can get now. They, they dropped off the lowest trim, which is like 29,000. So now you have to start off at like $34,000 and up, $35,000 and go up. So it's not a cheap vehicle, um, but it does hold its value fairly well. So if you're, you know, buying it, using it and trading it in, your cost of ownership's not gonna be so bad. Um, but you know, but anyways, uh, let, me, let me know what you think uh, of this vehicle. And don't forget to check out the, the, the link in the description. I got some merchandise um, based on my pointer here. And um, they have like magnets, stickers, and uh, charms, and a keychain. So you can check that out in the link in the description. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about this vehicle, since I have it with me all the time, I can try to answer those questions and, um, you know, try to provide if you're shopping especially if you're shopping for the ridgeline i can provide some you know feedback on that because i just went through the process so anyways th thank you for watching i'll see you next time